Hey, if you're watching this, you've probably been using Airtable for a while and you are now wishing that you could display some of that delicious data you have in Airtable in WordPress. And you can now with AirPress. And I'm going to show a basic setup um, using one of Airtable's um, default template bases to show uh, how we can do that. So let's, let's jump in. First thing we're going to have to do is set up um, our base in Airtable. So if you log into Airtable.com, and we're going to create a new base uh, from a template. Let's select the local business, product, catalog, and orders. It has a nice spectrum of data that we can pull uh, as examples. So once that's set up, we need to make sure we have an API key. So go to account. and generate API key. All right. We're also going to need to um, see the API documentation for our base. And so if you go to Airtable.com slash API, um, when you load it, it will give you a list of all your bases. If you select the one that you're using, it will show you the app ID in the URL bar. And if you click on the first or any of the tables, and then click on list records. It will show you an example API call. Um, and if you click show API key, you now have the app ID and the API key. And those are the two things you're going to need to plug into AirPress in order to get WordPress to talk to Airtable. So now that we have our base set up and we have our API keys set up, um, we can look at uh, what exactly we're going to do um, with this data. So if we open this up, we can see a um, bunch of different tables. I think a good simple example to start with is going to be vendors. So if we click on vendors, we can see uh, we have two vendors here. Um, so we're going to create a page for each vendor and we're going to show um, this data here from the vendor records uh, in WordPress. So to do that, we're going to switch over to um, our uh, WordPress install. This is a clean um, vanilla installation of WordPress. Um, so we're going to get uh, AirPress installed and configured. So we're going to activate the AirPress plugin and come down to the AirPress settings and we find Airtable connections. This is where we're going to plug in that API key and app ID. So we can just grab it here, the API key and the app ID. And we can give this configuration a name. I'm going to call it default. Uh, you're, you're able to add more than one configuration. Um, if I have the tab here and the configuration name, that will become important uh, later. Um, but for now, this is fine. We can also turn on debugging and make sure that um, the AirPress log is someplace that is writable. And if it's not writable, then we're going to get a little error message here that says we need to make it writable. And so you can log in um, through your FTP, hopefully SFTP clients or um, command line and do what you need to do to make that um, file writable. You can check with your web server uh, host documentation for that. Once that's writable, hit save changes and now setting saved. Um, so we have our Airtable connection and uh, we're, we're good to start configuring um, how we're going to pull data in. So there's two uh, basic um, types of AirPress connections. Uh, there's virtual posts and virtual fields. Um, virtual fields is effectively bringing Airtable data in to supplement WordPress posts and pages and custom post types. Uh, virtual posts is actually using an entire record from Airtable as a post or a page. And so it's it's very different. If we had a thousand records in Airtable that we wanted all displayed in WordPress, it'd definitely be a virtual post. Um, however, if we wanted to uh, do what we're doing now, which is just show two different pages, we'll do a virtual field. Um, it's more, more manual and straightforward in some ways, but uh, no less powerful. So again, we can do multiple configurations. I'm going to call this um, vendor config. Uh, it doesn't have to match the um, Airtable name or anything. Uh, this is just for your own naming purposes. Uh, the connection that we select uh, 
this is why we could create multiple connections. Um, but for now, we're going to create the, just select the default connection. The post type, we're going to be page. Um, later on, we'll do a custom post type, but for now, we'll just stick with page. And the Airtable table name, this is where uh, the values have to match exactly. Um, there's no uh, metadata API yet for Airtable, and so we have to make sure we type everything in perfectly. So we have vendors and we have name. Those are the two things we're really going to need right now. So vendors and then the column is name. Now what it means by your table column is this is the column that we're going to be looking for a value uh, in. For example, if we're in Airtable and I copy design within reach, and this is the name, what AirPress is essentially going to do is what this filter does. I'm going to say um, filter where name is design within reach. So you can see if I don't type name, if I typed title, even though it says name, or if I um, did design within reaches, uh, it's not going to return the records that I want. It's not going to work. And so it's uh, important to make these things match exactly. And so we're going to say the Airtable column is name. And the WordPress field that is going to have that matching value is going to be the post title. And we're going to hit save on that. And there we go. So now if we go to pages, since that was the post type we selected, and we look at our pages, we have a sample page, we can just hit, uh, we'll do new page. And we're going to make sure that this page title is exactly the same, design within reach. And um, we're going to show, for now, just one, one field. Uh, so let's do notes. We'll do the notes field. Um, so we're going to say our short code here that we can copy paste from the AirPress um, plugin page. We can come down and say, I want to show a simple field here. So I'm going to grab APR field. And the field is name. It's already already set up. Most of the, their examples are pretty straightforward with name as the first column. Um, oh, we're going to do notes. That's right, notes. And hit publish. So now, when we load this page, what WordPress is going to do is, even though we haven't changed permalinks or done anything fancy like that, as this page loads, um, it's going to be asked to look up the page title for this post, this page, in Airtable and return any matching records and its associated you know, uh, fields and data uh, to make it available so that short codes can call out that data and display it. Um, simple in concept, uh, a little bit harder in execution. So if we launch this page now and take a look, design within reach, there we go. Design within reach. We have a high volume discount, blah, blah, blah. We have a high volume discount, blah, blah, blah. So we've done our very first baby step of taking um, a page in WordPress and accessing through this short code um, fields from a record that matches by the title. Um, so let's go ahead and add a few more, um, a few more bits of information here about this design within reach. So we have uh, logos and catalog link and shipping details, uh, closest showroom address. Um, all of that stuff's fairly basic. So let's do a logo first. That'll be uh, fun. All right, so let's go ahead and duplicate notes. I'm gonna put a line break here in the middle and uh, put logo. And again, this is singular even though um, we know that uh, it can hold multiple logos. And in fact, the um, API documentation for vendors under fields come down to logo. It is telling us flat out that this is an array of attachment objects. It's always going to be plural. Um, it's always going to be potentially many. And that's just worth keeping in mind uh, as we move forward here. Um, so we're going to API field logo, hit update, and we'll see. Um, what it gives us here below the notes. All right, it gives us a little error message here. Logo is an image field. You must specify a format for that field, perhaps APR field logo URL single. OK, it could be a little bit clearer, I suppose. I'll need to work on that. Um, but for now, it gives us something nice that we can paste that actually matches up with what we're already trying to do. APR field logo URL. So what this 
this is called a pipe character. Um, it's just a delimiter that I'm using to um, help us traverse this logo um, object. If we go back uh, into the API docs here, and we can see that the logo field is actually, uh, it has an ID, a URL, file name, size, type, then has thumbnails, small, URL, width, has a whole lot of stuff. And so we need to drill down into that and specify which attribute we want to get out of there. So for now, we're just saying URL. And since there are multiple, um, if we don't specify single, then uh, it may give us back um, something that we're not wanting. So if we just want the single URL, of, say the first logo, let's see if this is what it gives us. <coughs> All right, we reload, and sure enough, now we get the um, URL of the very first logo. Sign within reach. And there we go. Uh, you may say, hey, that's not the first logo. Well, this is, a, a, I think it's almost a bug of sorts, but when you add um, attachments and photos and uh, any any linked record that or any field that can hold multiple items, um, whatever you add in first gets pushed down visually um, in the editor here, but it, it remains um, first returned in the API. So even though as you add more photos to this, um, Crate and Barrel is going to look like it's last. However, uh, according to the API, it is first. Um, and so that, again, is a gotcha that, that comes up that we can solve with different sorting parameters later. Um, but for now, uh, we got what we wanted, the, the single URL of the logo coming out. If we wanted more than that, we could take off single, and we could see um, what it's going to do when we load the page. Sure enough, it shows both. Uh, there's no uh, delimiter between them. Nothing's wrapped around them. And this is where the next, uh, the, these two parameters come in handy. We have, um, first of all, we have glue. This is the, the more simple one. Um, we could just say uh, we want to put a comma uh, between these two items. Sure enough, it now uh, has a comma between these two items and, and it's joining them together. And so if we come in and um, if we were to add um, another image um, for uh, this uh, this logo cell, um, just download this one and we will add it back in. There we go. Now we have uh, three in there. We come back here and hit reload. And we do have caching enabled, so I'm just going to do fresh equals true. And this is a good spot to point out um, that fresh equals true that I just added there is what we configured um, in the AirPress connection. The default connection that we named it, we said fresh. We could change that to whatever query var we wanted, and it would reflect that. We could also change this both of these to zero. Um, I'll explain more about the caching later. Um, but for now, let's jump back and see. Yep, we have our comma and our comma, so it's, it's uh, gluing these records together um, with a comma. What we can also do uh, is something called wrapper. In fact, we can uh, keep glue as well and use both glue and wrap. We'll put a horizontal rule to divide them, and then we're going to wrap um, each of these URLs um, in uh, an image tag, obviously, because that would display it. So image source equals, and close it off. And the source uh, is just going to be percent %s. Uh, you can pretty much use that for anything. Uh, it just means a string. It's using the PHP function sprint f. Uh, so you can see from this example here, um, there are blank monkeys in the blank. And so the format is the string. And so it's going to echo or print out the, the sentence here. And it's going to replace the D with the number. And so D is decimal. And that's a number, so that's nice. And then uh, location is a string. And so it's a string here. It can get pretty complicated, but suffice to say, a simple S will uh, serve your needs.
quite well. Um, so just hit update on that and we'll reload. And we can see that we get a nice image list here uh, separated by these horizontal rules. We got all three images. Um, we still have fresh equals true, so we can take that off so we can use the cache. And you can see how fast that loads. Um, and so that API call that goes out um, is very, very quick. While we're on the topic of caching and uh, API speed and performance, let's go back and look at the Airtable connection settings for refresh and expire. Um, I don't remember if I already said this, but refresh uh, is um, the time within which um, after data is loaded, it will continue to serve from the cache. And when it passes this number of seconds, so it passes 300 seconds, it will continue to serve it from the cache. However, it will immediately schedule it for a reload. And that way the, um, the site visitor uh, gets the full advantage of the cached API data. Um, but then the next visitor is going to get fresh data. And so if you have um, enough visitors where they're uh, constantly hitting this every 300 seconds, then theoretically it would always load from the cache. Um, expire is the point at which it is deemed too old to serve and it will not be served and even if a visitor comes it will slow down the pages it loads it just like it did the very first time um, if we lower these numbers we can see it in action a little bit better if we do 15 seconds and 60 seconds here um, and we come over and um, well we'll leave the images there alone and see what uh, what our what our site's doing right now. We'll look at the log and it just did a fresh load. Um, so let's hit reload again here. And it did, a, it did a cached query and it says it needs refreshing in five seconds. And so that means if we hit it again, it's still gonna serve it cached, but it did a delayed query and then it did an asynchronous load and then it loaded this in the background and it ran it. Um, and so essentially it this is not going to slow down. I could sit here and click um, every couple of seconds and it will load quickly. Or I could wait uh, the, the full amount of time until it has um, gone past the refresh um, limit of, of uh, what was it, 15, and it will still load quickly. It's not reaching out to the API. It was a, a delayed query that is stashed and triggered through an asynchronous page load back to itself. Very similar to how WordPress cron works. Um, I was really excited to, to nail this down. And so it does refresh the query. So to show this uh, working, let's go ahead and change um, the images. And we'll go ahead and reset the images back to, um, back to that. And we're gonna change the note to, uh, let's just put on here this is new and we come immediately back here and hit reload and we don't we don't see it um, because it uh, it wasn't in the cache but in the background it did stash and it reloaded it and so now we hit reload and we'll load it quickly and it's new and we only have the two images and if we look back it was a cached query and so our page load never had to wait for uh, the API call. It was always cached uh, because of that asynchronous background loading. Um, so that's a really exciting feature of um, AirPress that allows us to constantly be pulling in data um, and always have it be fresh. And so that's, that's really neat. So we've covered the, uh, the very, very basics of pulling in data using um, the virtual uh, fields and now let's look at what that would look like as a virtual post. Um, a virtual post is going to be um, a lot different. Uh, we're going to need a um, a regular expression to match a URL string. So we're going to go ahead and just call this. Um, we can call it the same vendor config uh, that we called the other one because they're different. It's a virtual post, virtual field, so we can name it the same if we want. It doesn't matter. We need a URL pattern to match. Um, and so if we imagine we wanted to have the site structure be, um, you know, wordtest.loc front slash um, vendors front slash and then our, our, um, our vendor name, maybe it would be something like that. Um, a really good tool for figuring out these URL patterns is um, 
there's a PHP Live regex.com where you can type in um, different regex samples and then you know what you think will match it uh, or what the incoming you know source is and so the the string that this is going to match is the um, is the requested URL which is going to be um, it's not going to have the root slash on it it's just going to start so vendors front slash and then um, we're going to have some vendor string here and we can see that it matches some vendor string and then this is what it will use to look up instead of the title so for the virtual fields it used the title as we had configured it um, let's go back and look at that one more time for the virtual fields we, we use the post title and it's going to look in the name um, but for the virtual posts we have to set a URL pattern um, for it to match because we don't know what that value is going to be and so the complication here, which you may have already seen, is that we don't have access to, um, to the title right here. And so we need to have some field um, in uh, Airtable that we can also have in the URL so that that's how we link the two together. So one of the things that works right out of the box would be the record ID. And so if I were to come to this design within reach and do the uh, spacebar uh, key command here, it pulls up and it gives us the record ID in the address bar. And so I'm going um, to use that record ID uh, as, as a test so that we can, um, we can do this without modifying anything in the, um, in the Airtable template base. So now that I have the record ID, I can attempt to load um, that page. And uh, so for this, I'm going to turn on pretty URLs because it's kind of pointless to go through all this trouble if we're not going to have uh, our permalinks set um, in an attractive way. There we go. So now if we come back and reload this page, we're going to get the nice URL structure. And so I'm going to go ahead and say, vendors front slash and then the record ID and obviously this isn't how it would you know be in the end but this is going to illustrate how this how the virtual posts work so this page can't be found there is no page that is a child page of vendors that's has this as the slug it doesn't exist at all but that's what we're going to say here is that that's what we want to search for so our filter by formula then is going to be the record ID equals and one this is going to be the variable that matches this regular expression and again that's something that you can um, you can see here uh, one that's the first variable uh, and so in PHP you put the, the dollar sign and so that's where that uh, syntax comes from um, and again this is going to be very um, it's going to be identical to what would happen if we came here and we did filter we did add filter where and then I'll give us record ID here um, so if we did a formula um, and we just called this ID and we called it a uh, formula and we did formula is record there you go record ID so it's going to show us the record ID and so now if I did filter where ID is this ID again this is exactly how the uh, virtual the AirPress virtual post is going to look it up um, so we're going to delete that because we can always access that without um, needing the column, without needing the value in the column. Um, so we're going to say record ID, just like we did in the formula, um, equals 1, which is the value that it's going to extract from the URL here. And we're going to execute that filter. We're going to run that query in the vendors table. The um, field we use is postname. Um, this is still a little bit of a work in progress, but we should be able to say uh, the post name. Um, we're just going to reference the same um, the same thing here because again, the post name and the URL all have to be um, alphanumeric strings with uh, underscores or hyphens. They can't have a lot of special characters and things like that. Um, and we're going to map it to a particular page, and so. What I'm going to do to save some time is just map it back to this design within reach page um, and then I'm going to delete the other configuration so that it doesn't conflict. Or maybe instead of deleting it, I will 
say a post instead of a page. So now it's not going to try and load there. So now when I come back to this page that didn't load before, what do you know? We're back on to the same page that we had. And this is a virtual page now. So if, um, if I had come and um, grabbed the crate and barrel um, record ID and put that in here, the page title won't change because that's still hard coded on the page. Um, but that is something that we can change with some hooks and filters. Um, but now you can already start to see the potential as things um, swap out extremely dynamically just using um, a portion of the URL string to do the lookup. What I typically do is I create a field called slug and um, that is what I use to reference it. And so I might uh, manually create a design within reach and crate in barrel and so then I can do um, something like this if I change my virtual um, click back virtual posts change virtual posts instead of record ID equals that I'm gonna say I want my slug column to equal that and then I can say also I want it could either be one or it could be um, slug. That's fine. Um, and it could actually even be slug in one. You can mix and match in here pretty well. Uh, at least that's the intent. That's a, a new feature. So if we come back and hit reload, whoops, not reload. We wanted the slug. Well, we can see here we get the nice 404 page not found because um, that's not how this virtual post is configured and so it dutifully uh, reports a 404 error whereas now if we do design within reach now we have our nice clean URL because the the portion of the URL that we're um, looking for and searching for is here in Airtable ready to uh, retrieve data so that's a lot uh, to, to cram in there and throw out there, but I hope it gives you an idea of how to use the basics of these. Um, maybe next time we'll talk more about um, how to uh, do more advanced things in here, like we could do um, a loop field, APR loop, and field equals, and we could just do logo right here. And then instead of the, um, the glue and all that, we could do, um, APR loop, got to close that, and then um, we could do URL, image source equals, and then we'll put back in our HR, and so we could do that instead. Let's come back, well, that's not going to look any different, so that's not going to help us. Um, instead of URL, what if we did um, thumbnail? We'll look over here and see thumbnails small URL. Thumbnails small URL. And you recognize our pipe character as the delimiter. Update and reload. So there we go. Um, there's a, a lot packed into this plugin and I, I can't wait to uh, unpack it and share it with you uh, but hopefully again this video has given you um, some insight into how you can use it if you have any ideas or suggestions um, I'd love to hear them um, contact me on the um, the WordPress plugin forum for now um, there's a github repo you can submit uh, code edits if you want for review and uh, we can look at incorporating those It'd be fun to have uh, some other advanced coders jump in on this as well and help out. I think it has a lot of potential. Um, also, if you have any other ideas for, um, in addition to the virtual fields and virtual posts, um, I have some ideas as well, uh, different um, short codes that could embed specific types of data and make it easier to use. And of course, there is um, all the PHP um, that you are able to use to create your own queries um, and to run them, um, which is very powerful if you're a coder. Um, so yeah, thanks for, for hanging out and learning a little bit about AirPress. Uh, it's been a, a passion project of mine and a client project and ongoing work for 
uh, a year now, uh, and I've really enjoyed it. So I hope you do too, and I hope you build many awesome sites with it. Thanks so much.